Hello, it's Aga from Arby's Artist and today I love to show you the camera movements you can use in your animations. Plus, I give you an idea when you can use each of them. Camera movements are a part of storytelling. By combining different kinds of them in a strategic way, you'll be able to guide your viewers through the story. This way, you can add a sense of deeper visual interest. Here, you basically zoom in or zoom out. It gives an impression that you're moving closer or further away from your subject. A quick zoom movement can add a sense of drama and energy. I don't recommend to use this too often. I wouldn't use this as a default move, but when used with intention, can give you a great results. You can achieve this by moving your camera horizontally. So you move the camera left to right or right to left. You don't change the position of the camera itself though, just the direction it faces, so the camera target. It can be used, for example, in order to create a sense of a place or when we want to follow the moving object. Here you move the camera vertically, so you move the camera down to up or up to down. The same as in the pan movement, the camera is stationary, but the camera target is moving. It helps to fit the subject into a frame and it can create a really effective shot. A slow upwards tilt makes the subject appear bigger and more significant. On the other hand, downwards tilt uh, make a subject look less important and smaller. In this example, the entire camera, so the camera and the target, are moving at the same time, going forward or backwards. The dolly gives the impression that we are going towards or away from the subject. In animation, you can use the dolly forward movement to introduce the space, while the dolly backward movements creates the goodbye effect. The same as in the dolly shot, the entire camera is moving, but now instead of going in and out, you're going left to right or right to left. You can use this, for example, when you want to follow the moving object, or for example, when you want to create a more close-up shot of the space and at the same time, you want to show more of the side context. The same as in the previous examples, the entire camera is moving, but now we move the camera vertically, so up or down. It works pretty well if you want to show a more detailed shot of some high subjects, such a building. Here, basically we imitate a jeep or a crane movement. So we go from the higher level, like bird view level, to lower, like human eye level, and vice versa. It typically gives the viewers a higher point of view. It can be used, for example, to set a scene and establish location. Basically, we move the camera around 360 degrees, keeping more or less the same distance and pointing out the subject. It's used with a wider focal length to have a subject close and to see the surroundings. It creates a really kinematic shot where you can see more of the context. It's a combination of the basic camera movements, so basically we tilt and pan the camera at the same time. It works pretty well in real estate videos when you want to show the entire building. Another combination of the basic movements. So you pull in or pull out the camera and at the beginning or at the end you will tilt up or tilt down at the same time. 
It's a great way to show your subject closer and introducing the context at the same time. If this movement is fast, it can add a lot of dynamism to your shot. I would like to encourage you to try to set up all these camera movements in the 3D software. If you want to know everything about animations in 3D, I'd like to invite you to check out our animation course where we show you step by step how to create all of these camera movements and much, much more. Click here to check it out on our website. Remember, the more practice you put into this, the better results you will get. It works as always, doesn't it? Bye-bye!